Hello again everyone, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. You are looking at the underside of my latest Singer 15-91. This is of course uh, one of the many um, variations of the Singer 15 class, a legendary machine. Singer had many legendary designs because it was in business for so long. Uh, but the 15-91 is the machine that I often uh, suggest to uh, those of you watching the channel that is arguably the strongest and toughest uh, straight stitch sewing machine from the vintage era for domestic use ever made. Uh, but I was underneath, I've uh, been making videos today and was underneath uh, the machine and uh, been getting all the, in, any of the lint or dust that I had on the bottom. There wasn't a ton, but I got that off and then I've been going around doing uh, the different uh, oiling to different points. I've showed this in other videos, but I wanted to point out something I may have mentioned to you guys before. <clears throat> There's a couple of places that I wanted to show you what I do for lubrication, uh, one of which you will use very often and you will want it lubricated, and another one that might not seem all that important to you, uh, but I believe should be, uh, as part of restoring and overhauling a machine, you should uh, address uh, basically making sure it works and if it doesn't, uh, get it to work. Uh, the first thing I'll point to, and the one that's not always obvious to folks unless you look in the manual and you really wanna know how to lower your feed dogs. Now, feed dogs were typically <coughs> lowered whenever you wanted to do free motion embroidery uh, our ancestors who used these machines would have said that they were darning, right? They often would use that term. You could darn <clears throat> any kind of garment that had been damaged, and certainly socks are one of those things that often would get holes in them. And our, uh, you know, people were very frugal, and they, they made things last, and they would darn socks. But over the years, many people stopped using that feature. And so uh, the device that allows you to control the height of your feet dogs was often ignored, and it was ignored for service, and they are often frozen. But that doesn't mean they're broken. Now, on the uh, Singer 15s from this era, and I believe also the Singer 201s, I'm pretty sure the 201s have the same setup. Don't have one in front of me, but I've, I've overhauled enough of them that I should remember this I think, correctly, I think. But you'll notice that there is a big uh, knurled thumb screw right here. Let's uh, get you guys maybe a slightly different perspective. I'll turn the camera so you can see it from another angle. Maybe we can zoom in here. Now, this device, uh, you know, it, it, it does several things. On some machines, you will, when you adjust it, and I'll show you, you turn it to the left, of course, and when you do, uh, there's, a, there's a linkage here that moves down. And when it does, it pulls, excuse me, it pulls. Uh, when you loosen this, and this, uh, this piece here is up, your feed dogs are down. So I'll turn the machine around. You guys can see it. Oh. And if I go in and put the needle plate back in, you can clearly see that the feed dogs are down. Now I'm gonna come underneath and touch that little piece I just showed you with my finger so you can see how it, how it impacts the, um, the feed dogs. Let's make sure I'm doing this and see what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, so I've got my finger down here, guys, and I want you to look closely. If you look here at this opening, you'll see, you should be able to see, I think, the feed dogs move up. You can see them coming up, right? Now, uh, you, for many machines, this is an up or down situation, right? And you can adjust them so that they're down and then you can sew without the feed dogs moving the fabric for darning, again, free motion embroidery. However, on some of these uh, feed dog adjusters, there is a uh, range around which you can adjust them. Now, normally, if you had a really fancy uh, sewing machine, many of the Japanese clones from the 60s, late 50s, early 60s, they started giving you the option of either having the feed dogs up, having them down, or having different, you know, maybe uh, one or two levels in between 
so that the feed dogs would come up, but 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 uh, with less height, and that would allow you to sew things like silk and and other delicate fabrics, hopefully without chewing them up with your with your feed dogs. But this uh, you can see here now uh, this 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 set screw here, this thumb screw is loose, and that's why I'm able to to push up and down. So again, with it up, well, you just heard the plate the blink. That's all right. So with this is up, the feed dogs are down, right? And then when I push down, if I want to lock, lock them up in place with their height, I can do that. But you also have the option, there's a, there's a range here, right? You can see there's a, let's see if that's a better angle. You can see that you have a bit of a range. Now, one of the things you, you could do, and I haven't looked at the manual, but I'm, I'm, this is a theory I'm throwing out. You guys tell me if you've ever used this, this feature for this purpose. Um, if you want to have your feed dogs up, but maybe you don't want them up all the way because, again, they're taller and they're designed for you know most fabrics. But for delicates, you don't want them that high. And so you, know, you can actually, within this you know, sort of range, you could come go in the middle, right? And as you... All you do is turn your set screw to the right. <clears throat> now, what you have is feed dogs that are coming up, but not very high. Uh, I'm going to then unset that and then... Now, if I push all the way down, okay, if I push all the way down, I'm going to hold this down and I'm just going to turn the screw to, to get it nice and snug then you have high feed dogs, okay? And you can't see the plate right here, but your feed dogs are at their highest. And again, let me just do this once more. I'll loosen the screw, and now with this piece all the way up, the feed dogs are completely down. You can do darning or, or free motion, whatever. But again, you can also come somewhere in between, and that'll kind of give you a, a light touch on your feed dogs enough to to feed fabrics like silk and maybe some very light cotton, lightweight cottons without um, overly being overly aggressive on those fabrics because those fabrics are more, thus the name delicates. They're called delicates for a reason. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this back. But that's just something I wanted to show you guys. It's something that it's easy to forget. It's easy to overlook, but it's a useful feature in every machine that I overhaul. I always uh, make sure that this is working. Now this one I had to get a uh, there's like a there's a straight head here in the screw and I was able to get a uh, my screwdriver uh, to turn it and I was using this one here and I was able to get it loose. You uh, don't be surprised if you need to use uh, either sewing machine oil, penetrant oil, or heat or all three to gently coax this uh, because sometimes even if you get the the thumb screw loosened these two pieces here will be fused together with old oil. You can get them apart. It's a very heavy, beefy uh, device, but you want to take your time and get it loosened. And then once you get new oil in there, it should work fine. Um, like I say, it's a fairly simple uh, uh, feature to the machine. But again, many of these were never used from the time they left the factory. And of all the things I ever, uh, you know, have to put my hands on in a machine to get it overhauled, I'd say that this is the most commonly stock, just because they weren't used very much. Okay, now another area, and I think I mentioned in another video I would do this uh, to show show this to you guys. So of course this is my bobbin plate. I removed it so I could just get easier access when I was cleaning and lubricating <clears throat> uh, the shuttle and the hook area. So the bottom of the Singer 15-91 bobbin plate looks like this. And it's got, oh, this is called a butterfly clip or what, but it's like a, it's kind of like a little clip and you can see it if I hold it in this direction, you'll see that this is a flexible steel. It's a very high quality steel and it's designed to allow uh, this plate to slide and yet be secured so it won't flop off on you when you're using it. Now, <clears throat> If you look, you will see right here and then up here, a mirror, uh, sort of a mirror image of this is a little track. And then on the upper side is the, is basically the tracks that you're used to seeing. If I 
I can tilt this back toward you guys, you'll see I'm going, there's a track here and a track here. So what, the first thing I want to do, the uh, first thing you will, you should do, is get rid of any dust, right? Because remember, we have lint dust that gets all over the place, and sometimes it will be caked up. I don't see a lot here, but I'm just kind of wanting to get off anything that might be on there. You can do the same thing with the rim of where your needle plate's going to go, so it'll seat properly, just in case. Now, <clears throat> you can put, you can use sewing machine oil, and it will work. I prefer to use grease. So I have. Uh, grease in this little kind of like a like a syringe if you will just makes it easier for me to point and I'm gonna put just a dab uh, maybe just you know, a couple dabs on each of the upper um, track but then you want to remember to come underneath because don't forget that the track oh, little needle plate you don't want to forget that the track has two sides, right? Because this clip, the, these two sides are going to go underneath, right? On the on the little tracks underneath. But don't forget that your um, your plate up top is going to need to slide. You have two surfaces that are uh, basically need going to go on their own track and need to be <clears throat> need to have those tracks lubricated. Here's the spring, right? And both sides of the spring on on the plate are going to they're going to ride on this lower or underside track, and then basically your your plate itself, or the underside of the plate, not the spring, but right there, it's going to ride on the top track. So you really want to lubricate both. Again, this is not part of your normal uh, routine machine oiling. Uh, if you use the grease here, I know grease is normally used for gears, but if you put grease here, and Dia, don't don't. Don't flood this area with grease. You don't need that much, right? Just a couple of dabs, just enough to get it so that when you put this on, it's going to, uh, when you put the plate on, you know, it's going to slide up and down and you'll have, you should have just a light film of grease across the tracks and that's enough. Um, the grease should last longer than oil. And uh, again, you don't want to use a ton of grease because you don't need it. Otherwise you, you make more of a mess. And um, it's just more, more, more places for dust to, to, uh, to, uh, to hang out with. Because dust, like a magnet, it really loves grease and oil. And we, we want to reduce that as much as we can. Okay, so here's the plate. Normally, you know, I, you can put it on from up above or below. And I'm just going to do it down here so you guys can see. Right, so there's one part of that. Oh, come over here, make it easier. One thing I should point out to you guys, when you're going to put this on, uh, I'm used to use doing it by feel from up top, but if you look here, you'll see that there's a there's a somewhat of an angle on this very edge, and Singer put that there for a reason. So if I put a little grease there, that might make my, my mission here a little easier. So watch as I put the, the spring, or the clip rather, I keep calling it a spring. It's not a coil spring, but... Um, so I'm going to put this here. There we go. Now, so I started up on this side, and then I came at an angle, sort of, I don't know, uh, sort of like this. And this edge, I'm like, maybe this edge is, this edge here actually may be uh, beveled as well. It's hard to see, I know, because we're, we're dealing with a black finish and not, not the greatest of light here. Um, so we can kind of just do that. So now uh, I've got the plate and I can just slide it back, back and forth a few times. And now I've spread the grease around. If you want, you can take a cotton swab or a rag and come in here and just anything that's excess that's coming off the track, you can take, you can just 
you know, clean it up a bit, guys. It's not, um, not that critical that you have. Again, you want to use as little as you need to. So now you can see where a, a where this clip goes, why it's under here, what it's doing, right? But it's not. It's it's it actually has a place and a track where it needs to be. And now we've got some um, some lubrication there to help it slide. Um, it just it's a little bit easier on the plate if you have that instead of it just being dry metal on metal. And if we come up to the top side, you will see I've got a little bit of a little bit of grease here now that it's been sliding back and forth and I can just take off that little bit of excess. Again, this is just kind of a you know just a little bit of a just a little helpful thing for when you're, you know, all these little things, they don't seem like much, but they do add up. And um, they really make a difference in terms of you using the machine. Because remember, these machines, when they left the factory, they were lubricated, they were humming like, like uh, the amazing machines they are. But over time, uh, things like cleaning and lubrication and adjustment, you know, it's, it's a real machine, it needs it, and now it has it. So. There we go. We've got to just be uh, putting the get the screws back in here, and I'll have my feed dogs will be clean. And underneath, you guys saw in the other video, I've got the the shuttle and the hook and then the um, and uh, the race and the race cover. All of that came apart and was cleaned. Uh, put a little bit of lubrication on the hook, not much. And now we're ready to move on to the next uh, the next section of the machine. Uh, I've done the side. I've done here, down here below. I've actually done in the back, uh, the back door, which I've shown on Singer 15s before. And then uh, we're going to take a look at the the vaunted, the heralded uh, Singer potted motor. Uh, Singer didn't call it that, but a lot of the fans today, that's what we call them, those direct drive beltless motors. So anyway, stay tuned for that. I'll be putting up a video, talk to you guys about that motor, what I love about them, and what can really be frustrating with them at times. Uh, but um, I so think they're worth it. They're definitely worth keeping and, and restoring because like so many other things in the vintage sewing machine world, they are amazing. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.